Hello and welcome to the um, the vodcast and introduction to week four of Accounting One in uh, groups eight and eighteen. Hope you've had a great week. Um, I hope you've had a relaxing weekend, uh, and I hope you've managed to slide a bit of study in there. Uh, it's been quite a busy one for me. I've had my oldest daughter's sixth birthday um, uh, yet today. Uh, down at Ferry Park. Uh, those of you here in Melbourne would um, perhaps be familiar with Ferry Park. Uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great time um, if you've got kids uh, down there. Um, and of course, there was a bit of an Elsa oh, Frozen theme, I guess. Um, I noticed an interesting statistic uh, that in North America, approximately three million Elsa dresses have been sold, um, and um, approximately three million. Uh, four-year-old girls live in North America. So, um, coincidence, maybe? Anyway, forget useless statistics. Uh, let's talk about um, accounting. So, uh, it's been a bit quieter on the forums. Hopefully some of you this week might, um, want, you know, while you're, while you're looking at your study for the test, or after you've done the test, or, or at some stage or another, you might be able to get on and um, post up there how things are going. Um, and, and thanks for those who have participated this week. Um, and um, yeah, I think it is really valuable activity. Now, uh, the online test. Okay, so we've got the online test this week. That is due by 11.59pm on Sunday the 30th of November. So you must have submitted at least one sitting by then. Now, you can actually submit three test sittings. Those of you who are not aware of that, definitely take advantage of it. You will get your best score counted towards your grade. And each time you sit, be aware that a random selection of questions are chosen for your test. So you won't get the same questions every time. You may, you, you may not. Now, I think, compared to the tests I got when I was at uni, there, this is a very accommodating test. You can open it and keep it open for the whole week if you want. And you can close it and then reopen it up to three times. And so you'll have three scores at the end of the week. If you're smart, you'll do all three because you'll get the best one. And by and large, your test results will get better as you go along because you're researching things um, in doing the test. Um, and and yeah, there, there is actually no um, time limit as in of a session uh, for the test, like 30 minutes or an hour or, or an hour and a half, whatever. Um, it's just whenever you open it, whenever you close it and submit it um, within the week, this coming week. So good luck with that. Study hard on weeks one to three. That is what is accessible in this test, weeks one, two, three. So, week four, course thrown in there with the online test got another week of content to look at and we're looking at measuring and recording financial transactions we'll go into a whole heap of technical stuff about um, you know how uh, identifying transaction matching matching principle all that sort of stuff the key principle I'd like to draw your attention to is accrual accounting this is a very important principle for both accountants and non-accountants. If you're going to be an accountant, it's probably actually not all that important that you really understand it now. I shouldn't say this because definitely, definitely if you're an accountant, definitely understand it right now. But you will know accrual accounting if you become an accountant or you do an accounting major. You, you will know it. Um, you'll have to. Um, if you are non-accounting, marketing or you know, some other some other field. Um, you will benefit greatly from really understanding it. And that's because managing budgets is all about accrual accounting. It's all about understanding the timing of transactions. And that's what accrual accounting is about. It's saying when does a transaction actually occur. It's actually not when you pay for it. When you pay for it is of little importance. It doesn't give you the best um, picture of the wealth and um, flow of resources of a business 
just looking at when you make a cash payment. Take for example purchase of equipment and of course this is the obvious example depreciation. You purchase a motor vehicle and um, you pay $30,000. Well of course you haven't incurred $30,000 worth of expenditure. You've got a motor vehicle there that's going to last you three or four years um, and then you'll turn it over and you will um, you'll actually sell it for um, a sum. So you've got that incurred reduction in its value and that's the accrual. The accrual is you're accruing expenditure in that motor vehicle as you use it. So it's as you use resources, it's as you take possession of um, goods um, into, into, the, into the company, not when you pay for them. You might pay for them on an account at the end of the month, but you might take possession of them and use them uh, be, before that or after that. Um, the other thing is revenue. That, that can accrue as well. And it's not necessarily when you receive the revenue that you've actually accrued it. You might complete work and then you have to then collect payment and it might be a 30, 60, 90 day um, uh, account. It, it, could, it could vary the payment terms, but the important thing to understand is a business must be measured on the expenses and revenue accrued uh, because that gives you the true picture of where the business is sitting. And of course the cash um, the cash alternative view of the business is, is just really looking at the flow in and out um, to, the, to the bank accounts or off a loan or, or, or anything, any sort of cash flow. I really recommend that, that you really become, um, uh, you really understand how, how it works because it will um, assist you greatly in uh, looking at financial reporting uh, and, and and other sorts of um, management reporting that you might come in contact with uh, in your work into the future. So the discussion forum this week is to follow on from last week's uh, activity where we looked at an, an annual report and I don't think last time I checked that anybody's actually submitted their activity. So I know that there was some talk on there, it's a bit daunting, it's, um, it is, and your reports are complex when you first look at them. They, a lot of things um, don't make sense, but that's okay, just pick out the things that you do get, the things that do resonate, and the things that you have learned about, and start to just piece those bits together, and eventually all of the bits you don't understand will sort of get smaller and smaller. Uh, that's the approach I take. I still wouldn't understand everything in it. And, and things change too. The financial standards are always changing. And so annual reports have to change along with them. So don't be too daunted. Just use the information that you can find, that you can relate to and that you understand, and then work through those activities. So it'd be great, it'd be great if someone can submit this week, um, at least one of you, um, maybe more. That'd be fantastic. It makes me look really good to my unit coordinators if I get lots of people posting. So, hey, please make me look good. Come on. It's not too hard. So, anyway, see how you go. It'd be great to hear from you. And um, we'll catch up with you again next week. Cheers.